A Monsters Expedition Through Puzzling Exhibitions is an open world Sokoban style puzzle game from Dracneck and Friends. This last weekend I made my way across its countless islands taking in the sights. So is this puzzle filled adventure worth the price of admission? I don't know. Let's find out. So what exactly is a Monsters Expedition? Well it turns out to be about a cute little monster who goes on holiday to the world's largest and worst museum. After a fairy drops you on a tiny island, the first thing you're going to learn is if you want to see what's on another island, you better start breaking down trees and pushing them around to create a pathway there. And with that single sentence, I simply describe the entire experience. I mean this guy absolutely does not subscribe to the leave it better than you found it mantra, and is arguably worse than even the onceler in the way he completely deforces any piece of land he finds himself on. And not even to get that need money. He's just doing it to read up on the hilarious misunderstandings of the monster world on human items. I mean, this doesn't do that. These guys are crazy. So the actual gameplay in a monster's expedition is really simple and easy to understand. I don't know what I expected. You can push over any trees, then either flip them end over end, or roll them until they hit something. And you can only walk on a log if you're above it and moving parallel to it. The islands are also filled with rocks which block movement not only of yourself but also the logs. Well except if they're small enough, and then you yourself can get on them or push logs on top of them. Oh, and there's also these longer logs which can be pushed or rolled, but not flipped. But if you put another log close to its base before pushing over, it'll fall over a space further. And oh shoot, you've also got to know that logs can roll over each other, but only if they're perpendicular. Ah, and I also forgot, if two logs take up one space, then they become a raft which you can travel with, but only if you push off of something. I don't know what I expected. Alright, so I guess what I meant by simple and easy is that the actions you can actually perform in the game are deceptively simple. And in fact, even 10 hours later when you're fondly reflecting on your expedition, you'll find that the only thing you actually did was push around bits of wood. But the core mechanic leads to these incredibly well thought out and complex puzzle islands. I don't know what I expected. And the constant addition of new ways to interact with these logs is absolutely masterful. Surprisingly, this game doesn't have any text-based tutorials telling you what to do. And in fact, it doesn't really tell you anything at all. Instead, you just get put on the starting island, which has one tree and only a single way to push it. The next one teaches you how to roll, the next one to flip. Soon without telling you anything, the game has taught you everything you need to know to start tackling this absolutely massive open world. And when I say massive, I really mean that. It's so massive that my game would drop big time frames just scrolling around the map near the end of my playthrough when I discovered most of what was out there. And the world's split into these little sections where most sections showcase a sort of unique mechanic, which you might not really see in other places in the game. Just like with the first island in the game teaching you how to push a tree, these sections usually start with showing the player what other mind-blowing thing they can do with these logs, and then asking them to use that new knowledge to complete increasingly difficult islands. And if you make a mistake, there's no need to stress, because a monster's expedition lets you rewind move by move pretty much as far back as you need to go. Or if you really bung stuff up, you can reset the entire island. It's just another thing I love about the game, because it's hard, and maybe you'll try 50 different wrong answers before finding the right solution, but it never punishes you for trying things out. Although there's also absolutely no shame in getting stuck and walking away for a bit. I mean there might be some puzzles you're just not ready for, but with more time and experience pushing around logs, you can make a triumphant return to show the island how good you are at handling wood. And there's a pretty nice fast travel system which can take you from mailbox to mailbox with zero load time. So leaving and coming back to wherever you were is a breeze. All of that being said, once you start going back to places where you are previously using rafts to move around, you're going to find that those rafts are still going to be wherever the hell you left them, I meaning you almost always have to redo those islands. Also let me give you all a quick hint that I wish I had when I started. So when you enter the monster mail there are these little footprints on the map, and I largely ignored these not really knowing what they represented. I mean, were they places I'd been and left uncompleted? Were they places I'd visited recently? Well in fact they show islands that you need to visit and complete in order to travel to new sections of the map. Now I'm not quite sure why I didn't figure this out way sooner. I mean it could be that there's a remarkable lack of a legend on the map, or it could be that I was using so much brain power in the actual game that I had none left over for the simplest logical deductions that didn't involve logs. So I finished my playthrough in just about 11 hours, and depending on if you've got more wrinkles on the brain than me, or just the dumbest dummy out there, your expedition length's gonna vary. But I've gotta say that after I left on the ferry and then the credits rolled, I still had a ton of islands I hadn't seen, so I hopped right back in to try and clear out the rest of the map. And I mean, I still haven't finished that yet, but for myself, even if I had 100% of the game at 11 hours, I would have been satisfied. So it's really just icing on the cake that it's so packed with lovingly crafted puzzle content. Now overall, I loved a Monsters Expedition. It's a smart game in a beautiful package. 
one that I'll be happy to revisit in a year or so when it's not so fresh in my mind. Now normally this is the part where I recommend everyone to check out the game, but just because puzzle games are very niche I'll say this instead. If you aren't into puzzle games or don't like logic problems you have to work through in your mind, there might not be much for you here except frustration. But if that doesn't sound like you, then you're going to absolutely love this trip through puzzling expeditions. For my final score, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a nice relaxing seat on a bench. No, I don't know what I expected. No, I don't know what I expected. No, I don't know what I expected. 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 Thank you.